Melissa Prendergast here, CEO and lead designer for Bella Sunshine Designs. Now I know blending sometimes can be a little scary. When you see all those diagrams, it just looks confusing. Don't worry. I created this fun video to show you what to do to get the perfect fit every single time. To blend your ladies, Reagan is super easy. First, you're gonna to need to get your materials together. You need something to write with and a French curve. Add this one, you might have a different one. This one's an antique, it's kind of old. So anyway, now with the Reagan, we actually did include a full bust adjustment in the pattern. If your busts are even larger than normal, you may still need a bust adjustment. However, it is easier to adjust the bust when you already have some measurement included in there. So you may just need to include it just a little bit. You will know because you will get drag lines from the bust. So if you do have that, you may need to a little bit more room in the bust. You can either blend from a larger size or you can do a traditional knit bust adjustment where you cut it out and um, move everything over. That's not gonna be included on this tutorial. We are just gonna be showing how to blend from the bust, the waist, into the hip. So, let's say you took your measurements and this puts you with something that didn't need a bust adjustment for a six bust. And then you wanna grade down to, excuse me, you want to blend down to a four. And so we're gonna be going from a six to a four. And let's say you got really wide hips. I know I have that problem. Um, you would go then from a four to an eight. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. Basically, it's kind of like connect the dots. We have our six here. If we were to follow these lines here, our six point, and we have our four waist. And you'll see where the natural waist hits for the four. You actually wanna use the six because everything's gonna go by your bust size. So it would be right here for the four. Now this has a little curve here because it is a raglan. So you wanna follow that curve down for the six and then curve it out for the four. I'll just use this right here. So we curve that all the way down. Super, super simple. Look at that, you already blended for the waist. So now if we want to blend for the hip, I will show you how to do that. Moved my pattern piece up here so you can see it. We've already blended down to this four waist. Now we wanna to blend to an eight hip. So we're gonna do the, basically the same thing. Here's our hip line. And we're just gonna blend this out to where it's nice. Now when you get about halfway there, I like to kind of change this around. So that way we have a curve, nice curve here, and we have a nice curve there. If you don't have any kind of straight jagged edges or jagged points, then that will mean you won't have any stress points on your fabric. So there you go. If you have an hourglass figure or maybe your hair, depends on you know any kind of shape that you are, it's pretty easy to just alter the pattern and blend the sizes that you need so that way you get a custom fit just for you. Because isn't that the point of sewing? We want everything to actually look good. The other thing I can recommend for ladies, I know a lot of you ladies may come from sewing for children and sewing for children a lot of times you don't make a muslin. For women, everybody's bodies are so different. It is so important to make a muslin and I promise you, you will be so much happier with that fabric you have been hoarding for forever if you make a test garment first. I love to go to one of the big box stores and just buy some cheap polyester sometimes. It's kind of ugly, It's you know, but it's like $2 a yard if you use a coupon. So um, I definitely, definitely recommend that to always, always, always make a muslin. And then you can do any kind of fit adjustments or if you need to size up or size down on something, you can do that. So there you go. You should be able to get your perfect fit, custom fit to your body. To lengthen or shorten our pattern is super easy. I've included some lengthen or shorten lines on the pattern in various spots. Um, one of them here is below the natural waist. If you need, say, more length than the torso, you, uh, you could cut at this line, add some more. There's also some below the hip, where if you just needed more length, you have to kind of know your body here. 
Uh, sewing for women is a little different than sewing for children because while um, children are all shaped differently, women are all shaped very differently. Um, everybody has different proportions. So it, it takes a little practice if you're not used to sewing for yourself to know exactly where you might need to add or take length. Um, for this example, we're gonna do it right here at um, below the natural waist. Let's say you need some more length in your torso. So what you're gonna wanna do is you wanna cut at that cut line. Now you can also cut, uh, add length in you know, different spots. If you know, say, your natural waist is further down, you could cut it up a little bit higher. Um, that's up to you and that's you know your personal fit recommendation. I'm just gonna show you ba the basics on how to lengthen or shorten. So let's say that you are say an inch taller than our recommended. We, we draft for five foot five to five foot seven. Uh, let's say that you need say an inch in your torso. You know that you have a really long torso. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut at this lengthen or shorten line and I like to get another extra piece of paper. Um, this is actually just a scrap. If you see this in a tester uh, thing, I put this in the uh, pages to print and it wasn't a page to print. So the, I like to save these little scraps for that, either that or for my kids to color on. Um, but you can put this actually behind the pattern because what we're gonna do is we're gonna just take this and you would line it up just as if it was still connected and you're gonna raise it an inch Let's say we need an inch. That'll be convenient because this is what my little ruler here is. So you would just raise it up an inch. And another thing sometimes I like to do is you could tape this to this pattern piece. This is kind of like an old method also of grading, Splash, slash and spread kind of grading. And then to be super exact, you could line up this ruler here since we need an inch or whatever amount you need, maybe you need two inches. For this example, we're gonna do an inch and I'll draw a line all the way across. And then you know this is an inch all the way and you could line this up. We'll do this straight so we know exactly where our end should be. And then you could tape this down right here, tape it down. And then this line here, we've already done our blending, but you would just re-blend that out. So you would draw yourself a new line here and re-blend it. And then you would have your inch. Now the same thing goes if let's say you're short. Let's say you need to take away an inch. You would do the same thing just in reverse. You cut. You can draw your new line so we got everything nice and straight. My line got a little crooked there. And just line it up. Tape your pattern together. And then re-blend this curve. So we have a nice even line. Probably wanna curve that out a little bit more. There you go. You just lengthened or shortened your pattern, super easy. And that's the whole point, right? Of blending is we get a custom fit. That's the reason why we sew. If we wanted something that didn't fit well, we'd buy ready to wear, right? Ha 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 ha. Hope you learned something today. You did it. You blended a pattern. See, wasn't it much easier than what you thought? Now you can get that perfect fit you've been dreaming of. Till next time.